Now let's ask that same question to Google. Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Aslik. I hope you're doing fine. Today we'll talk about the next, uh, the next is not yet confirmed, uh, the NEET PG or INICET or whatever, you know, the postgraduate medical entrance examination of India. I have summarized it into five important points. Now, if you stay till the end, you'll also get two personal advices, which I think are very important. So let's get to them one by one. So without further delay, let's begin. Point number one, understanding the changing trend. Now, what is the changing trend? Well, the trend is going towards the clinical case questions. No one is asking all those, you know, which is the most common that, the most common this, and now it's clinical case questions. I'll show you an example. A 60-year-old man reports to the emergency room complaining of shortness of breath and a rapid irregular heartbeat. So, it's an arrhythmia. His heart rate is 140. When an IV drug was administered and his heart rate went down to 65 which drug was used. Now, this is what we call a clinical case scenario. This was not meant to be a depressive video. Okay, so don't, don't leave the video by seeing the question. Don't do that. Now, I'm here to help you out. Actually, this question is simple, but the way it presented really makes it hard. This question, this large question, we can actually reduce it to two, three lines. Which of the following is an AV nodal blocker? Lignocaine, diltiazem, amiodarone, kinodine. These two questions are the same because in the large clinical question, you can see that the patient is having atrial fibrillation and his heart rate is dropped by the administration of the drug. No change in the rhythm. So it is a rate controlled drug. So the question is simply asking which of the following is an AV nodal blocker. Sounds easy. So the thing is clinical case questions are the new changing trend. So you have to change your method of preparation to gain an extra edge. So what are the changes that you have to do? You need to have an idea of the things. You need to have good concepts, good understandings, and a good grip on preclinical and paraclinical subjects, which means all those mugging up will not work anymore. You need to have good idea of pathology, pharmacology, and microbiology, and basic sciences like physiology, anatomy, and biochemistry. So the first point, understand the changing trend and prepare for that. You got it? Let's go to the second tip. Get a source and stick to it. Your source can be anything, be it marrow, preplada, egrical, e-medicos, whatever you have it. Get one source and stick to it. I'll tell you the importance of it. I already show you a question, right? Now let's ask that same question to Google. Even Google can't help us with such questions. So that's the problem here. So you need to have a source, okay? You need to have a teacher who explains you all these things. And that's the perfect way to learn this. So having a source is so important and let it be any source, no problem. Every source is wonderful in its sense. And I don't believe that any source will give you any extra edge. The only extra edge that you'll get is purely based on your hard work. What to do after getting a source? Integrative study is the need of the hour. You need to vertically integrate and horizontally integrate. Vertically means like biochemistry, like the metabolism of apolipoproteins, you link it with the atherosclerosis, then you link it with medicine, atherosclerotic cardiovascular diseases, like that. Serious pharmacology and serious you know, pathology, that's horizontal integration. So integration is the need of the hour. So when you get a source, you have to make sure that you got 19 subjects at your disposal at any given time. Some apps, they don't give you all the subjects. Like when you're in third year, they'll give you third year and final year subjects. What about the second year and first year subjects? Maybe we're learning about atherosclerotic vascular disease from medicine. But we need to remember the metabolism of upper lipoprotein from first year biochemistry. Your medicine teacher, surgery teacher can't teach you upper lipoprotein metabolism over his lecture because that will make his lecture so long. So invariably you have to end up reading again. So when you put your money in something, Make sure that they'll give you 19 subjects so you can easily switch over them whenever you need to. And don't wait for anyone else to come and integrate it. Integrate by yourself. 
when you are learning something for example cvs pharmacology can be clubbed with cvs pathology with cvs anatomy and cvs physiology because cvs physiology is the same thing that comes in cvs pharmacology and you can combine this with your medicine so this is the road map of how you should actually use the integration because that will help you with the changing trend so when you are buying a source make sure of 19 subjects at your disposal at any given time so now you have a source and the next thing is sticking to one source most of students have this fear of missing out an important concept or an important update just because they think that they only use one app that's completely <laughs> now stick to one source i don't care which it is all the faculties are top notch in every respective source the teachers are great stop comparing them don't do that you can compare the app interface you can combine the app design the app layout that's the only thing you have to compare all the faculties are top notch in every institution so get a source and stick to one source alone one source alone yeah i mean that do that do that one source and i think sticking to one source is the most important advice anyone can give you tip number 3 that is don't forget your clinics we all go to clinics from second year and yeah i also forgot to give it importance eh <sighs> so sad okay okay uh, you can't get anywhere by crying right so what's so special about clinics there's a famous embryologist named kate telmore he have a beautiful book in embryology that is developing human he also have an anatomy textbook that is a moore's clinical anatomy yeah we all read vishram singh and bd chaudhary yeah I know that I know that this Kethil Moore a beautiful quote it goes like this you will remember some of what you hear much of what you read more of what you see and almost all of what you experience and understand fully I hope that sums up everything that is in textbooks and in lectures you know all these clinical features laboratory diagnosis investigations of choice all these things are numbers and paragraphs and alphabets but in the clinics these are emotions and experiences so if you go and see an mi patient you go through the ecg you go through the cardiac biomarker levels and lab values they will stick to you forever yes you can't get every case in the clinics but you can surely get all the common ones and the important ones tip number 4 qbank revision grand test we have 19 subjects to finish and we know how vast the syllabus is it's so vast so vast so it doesn't matter how many lectures you see at the end what really matters is how much you retain in your brain so retention needs revision so you need to revise so please give importance to revision every app that you can find in the market have a q bank in it question bank means in all those questions now doing the questions is the main thing here consider you finish a topic go to the q bank and do that particular q bank that day itself So you'll get an idea which all information is important and which all areas are to be focused, and it will also tell you whether you understood the topic or not. Learning to solve a question is an art, especially if it's a clinical question. Beautiful. The questions are long, very, very long. I have to say, they have a lot of values in it: the BP, heart rate, the pulse rate of the patient, the blah 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 blah, the lab values, the investigations, the findings, all those things. And what is the probable diagnosis? What is the next investigation of choice? Which drug will you administer? Everything can be expected. So it's a long question. Solving such a question is an art, and that ability will only come to you if you do it a lot of times. You have to repeat and repeat and repeat, and only hard work and practice will give you the ability to solve such questions. Now let's come to the importance of grand test. A grand test is actually the combination of revision, Q bank, and exam atmosphere. You just combine every good thing, and you get a grand test. Now, the, you know, the bond teacher, a Basali sir, have beautifully said that when is the perfect time to do a grand test? It's yesterday. Yeah, we're already late. Now, the idea with grand test is that think of this. I told you how long the question is. In examination day, you will see 200 to 300 such questions. So 200 to 300 such questions in a stretch, which are scattered over 19 subjects over numerous topics. That, my friend, is just pure hard work and practice. So the best time to do a grand test was yesterday. Now let's get to the point number five, and that is this is not a sprint but a marathon. Consistency is the key here. May it be the Q bank that you solve one hour every day, or that two video that you watch every day. All these consistent actions, which may be small. but they are the thing that really give you an extra edge in your preparation 
Now let's see what Maro have to say about this. 95% of the toppers have highlighted the importance of consistently solving QBank. Out of curiosity, we analyzed our data. Did Maro just said they analyzed their own data? Well, they will have a lot of data because a lot of students use it, right? Now let's see what they found out. They found out that 100% of the toppers have sold at least 3 to 5 modules every day. On most days, they have sold 8 to 4 modules. I don't know why they put that in bracket. 3 to 5 itself is so hard. Now 8 to 14 every day. Okay, let's let's continue. Some students have a short phase where they solve a lot of modules. Oh, feels like me. Up to 20. Oh, that's not me. Together with faces without any QBank activity. Yeah, that's me for the past 6 months. This was a common pattern and the GT plus real exam performance of this group was poor. So that's it. Daily, slow-paced, consistent efforts are far better than occasional, explosive, steady phases. Oh, so you stay till this length. I love you. So here's your two personal advices. Advice number one, understand the plateau of latent potential. It means that the result of our effort are delayed. Yeah, delayed. It means that when you start working, when you start putting in the effort, when you start learning the content, when you start doing the QBank, you won't see your rank increasing. Oh my God, I've been working and why is my rank not going up? All my efforts are wasted. This is something that we all face. And this is known as the Valley of Disappointment. In Valley of Disappointment, we start putting the effort, we're not seeing the result. But my friend, all your efforts are not wasted. They are being stored. This is known as the Plateau of Latent Potential. Only after some time, you will see the results coming in. We put in a lot of effort and we don't see any results and we end up in this valley of disappointment. Like after putting in a lot of study hours, we don't see our rank improving. After seeing a lot of lectures and solving a lot of questions, still the clinical cases are getting hard for me. Believe my friend, your efforts are not wasted. They are being stored. I'll give you an example to understand this. Jacob Rees once said, When nothing seems to work, I go and look at the stone cutter hammering away at his rock. Perhaps a hundred times without as much as a crack showing in it. Yet at the hundred and first blow, it will split into two and I know it was not the last blow that did it, but all that had gone before. I hope you got the point. The stone cutter was hitting the stone hundred times. Not even a crack appeared. On the hundred and first, it broke into two. Was it the hundred and first hit that made the change? No. It's the plateau of flattened potential. All the effort was being stored. So my dear friend, if you are getting depressed that your efforts are not giving you result, please don't give up. Your efforts are being stored, not being wasted. One day or another, you will see your results coming up. Now the final advice. I think this is a very important one. Be prepared for uncertainties. Yes, my dear friend. The pandemic, the exam is getting postponed, the exam is getting pre-pawned, the exam is getting delayed, the exams are getting cancelled and we don't even know whether next will be conducted or not. So be prepared for all the uncertainties that will invariably come in your way during your preparation. The confidence you gain from your preparation will be the only thing that can give you a peace of mind when everyone else is losing theirs. So with these points, I'm ending this video. I hope you guys benefited from this. Best of luck for your preparation. And if you enjoyed this video, press that like, it will help me a lot. And if this video helped you in any sense, please consider sharing this with your friends. It will help me a lot. So thank you for being here. See you on the next video. Take care.